Okay, this is an example of calculating the viscous shear stress in a fluid layer. Uh, this particular fluid layer is called a boundary layer. Before I get started on this example, I want to talk a little bit about what a boundary layer is. It's a fundamental concept in fluid mechanics. So whenever fluid flows over a surface, we know uh, that it sticks at the surface, and so at the surface you have no velocity, but as you move away from the surface, the velocity increases and eventually uh, approaches the, what we call the free stream velocity. And so there's this region in here, near the surface in this sketch, uh, where the fluid is slowed down because of the action of viscosity. So right at the surface, of course, we have the no-slip condition, so there's no velocity, and then the velocity slowly increases until you approach uh, the uniform free stream condition. So in this problem, just as we've talked about in the previous presentation, we have uh, x coordinate here and the u component of velocity, and then y is the coordinate normal to the surface. So the problem states when a fluid flows over a surface, the velocity is reduced near the surface due to the action of viscosity. And here we have the velocity profile in the x direction, u, 3 halves u infinity y upon delta minus u infinity upon 2 y upon delta all cubed. And this applies from the surface from y equals 0 up until the edge of the boundary layer. Delta here is called the boundary layer thickness, the thickness of the region where the fluid is slowed down. And then beyond y equals delta, so beyond a certain distance from the surface here, we have u equals the free stream velocity. So u infinity is just a, a nomenclature to represent sort of a uniform velocity in the x direction when you get far enough away from the surface. So the problem we're trying to solve here is to calculate uh, the magnitude and direction of the fluid shear stress on the surface. In part b we're going to calculate the fluid shear stress at the edge of the boundary layer. So at y equals delta here. So out at y equals delta. And then for part c, uh, for air flowing at a free stream velocity of 11 meters per second, we're going to calculate the total shear force on the surface uh, for a surface area of 15 meters squared. And we're going to assume that the boundary layer thickness is uniform over the surface at a thickness of 5 millimeters. So let's deal first with the direction of the viscous shear stress on the surface. So intuitively, what direction do you think the force is? Now, we're talking about the force of the fluid on the surface. Is the surface pushed to the left or pushed to the right because of the, the action of the fluid? So I pause the video and think about this for a minute. So keep in mind what we talked about in the first presentation, that viscosity is analogous, it's basically fluid friction. And so if you had fluid flowing over a surface, the uh, viscous force inhibits the motion of the fluid. So the shear force exerted by the fluid on the surface will be in the flow direction, and the force of the surface on the fluid so the force on the fluid opposes fluid motion. This is analogous to you know, dynamic friction. So we get the direction of the force just from understanding the basic physics of the problem. So tau s, the surface shear stress, acts to the right in the positive x direction. So now we've got the direction of the uh, shear force, which is to the right in the positive x direction. Now we want to calculate the magnitude of the shear stress on the surface. And the local shear stress is given by this equation, Newton's sometimes called Newton's law of viscosity, tau equals mu du dy. Now what I want to point out is that this equation is the local shear stress. It can be applied anywhere in the flow field. So, over here on uh, the right, I've 
have a sketch of the flow. And what I've shown here is are the local arrows increasing in the y direction. Uh, this is just a sketch of the flow field uh, showing the u component of velocity increasing in the y direction. But if you were to plot uh, u versus y, you would have a, a curve like I've shown here with u equals zero at the surface and then the velocity increasing and eventually when you get far enough away from the surface at y equals delta, the velocity becomes uniform equal to this free string velocity u infinity. So if you wanted to get the shear stress at a given location in the boundary layer at a given y, you just come up, calculate the slope of the velocity profile at that location, so du dy, and then multiply it by the dynamic viscosity to get the shear stress. So that's the general approach. Now, in part A, what we're asked for is the magnitude of the shear stress on the surface, so at the surface. So we want the shear stress at the surface, so at y equals zero. So what we do to get tau s, we take the shear stress at y equals zero, so mu du dy at y equals zero and I've shown it over here. We want to get the slope right at y equals zero. So in the problem statement, you're told that the velocity profile, the x component of velocity, is 3 halves u infinity y upon delta minus u infinity upon 2 y upon delta all cubed, and that applies inside the boundary layer from all the way from zero to delta, which is the boundary layer thickness, that region of fluid that's slowed down. So we need to take the derivative of this expression and then apply it at y equals zero. So differentiating, let's just check this, we get, we have y here, so that's going to become one, so three u infinity two upon delta, that term is correct. And then uh, here we have y cubed, so this is going to become three halves u infinity delta cubed is a constant, y squared, so that term is also correct. Now, what we need to do is apply that at y equals zero. So if we assign y equals zero, I think you can see that the second term goes away, and all we're left with is the first term. So that equals three u infinity upon two delta. Now we've just got to multiply by the dynamic viscosity, and we've got the shear stress at the surface. So mu du dy y equals zero becomes three half mu u infinity upon delta. And we already discussed that this force, this shear force is at the surface. This is the force on the surface in the positive x direction. And that's the answer to part A. Part B asks you to evaluate the magnitude of the shear stress in another part of the boundary layer. So we're going to evaluate it at y equals delta, right at the edge of the boundary layer. So again, the general procedure is to get the shear stress at a given location. We take mu du dy, and then we calculate the derivative at y equals delta this time. So our previous differentiation of the velocity field from the previous slide gave du dy is 3 u infinity upon 2 delta minus 3 half u infinity y squared upon delta cubed. So what we've got to do now is evaluate that at y equals delta. And so we get du dy evaluated at y equals delta. Let's just check this. 3 u infinity upon uh, 2 delta and then minus, this is going to become 3 u infinity delta squared upon 2 delta cubed. You can see that that will go with that. And I hope you can see that your, both of these terms is 3 u infinity upon 2 delta. And of course, you get 0. And so the shear stress at the edge of the boundary layer is 0 because the velocity gradient at that location is 0. And I've shown it up here that if you looked at the velocity gradient where the where the u component of velocity stops changing with y, we have du dy equals zero, so we have no shear stress at the edge of the boundary layer. And so you could have guessed this result by uh, intuition.
the last part of the problem now wants you to calculate the total shear force on the surface for a surface area of 15 meters squared. And it's for air flowing over the surface at a velocity of 11 meters per second. So far outside the boundary layer, we have a uniform velocity in the x direction of 11 meters per second. We want to calculate the total force on the surface for a constant boundary layer thickness of 5 millimeters. So delta equals 5 millimeters. So from part A, we have that the shear stress of the surface is 3 half mu u infinity upon delta. That's, of course, the shear stress, that's the force per unit area at the surface. And so we need to multiply by the plan area. And I've shown over here that the area we're talking about is the surface area. By plan area, I mean the area looking down on the surface. So that the surface area over which the shear stress acts is 15 meters squared. And so we take that tau s times area. Now you can look up the dynamic viscosity of air. Be careful to get it at 20 degrees C in your textbook in table A2, and it's 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 newton second per meter squared. And now it's just a matter of, I think we have everything, it's just a matter of substituting the numbers into this expression uh, and then multiplying by area. So the shear force is the shear stress times area, so 3 half mu u infinity over delta, and then we multiply it by area here to convert the shear stress into a shear force. So 3 halves, uh, here's the dynamic viscosity of air, there's the free stream velocity, 11 meters per second, and the area is 15 meters squared, and the boundary layer thickness is 5 millimeters, or 0 0.005 meters. Now make sure you always balance the units, so you can see that the meters goes with the meters, the meter squared goes with the meter squared, and the second goes with the second, so we're left with newtons. And so when you calculate this out, we get a total force in the positive x direction on the surface of 0.891 newtons, which is a, a very small force, actually. I should point out that this viscous shear force is sometimes called skin friction, so you'll see that term in uh, fluid mechanics textbooks. And skin friction is one of the sources of drag, for example, on your car. It is the drag force that's caused by the viscosity of the air and the fact that the air sticks at the surface and you have this layer of, of air near the surface that's being slowed down by the action of viscosity. There's another source of, of drag on your car. We'll talk about that later in the course, but this is one particular source of, uh, of drag on your car, and it's called skin friction. It's usually pretty small on a car, but on something like an airplane wing, such as I've shown here, skin friction can be a, a, a significant source of drag. Uh, so skin friction can be the main source of, uh, of drag on a highly streamlined object such as an airplane wing. And so this diagram shows uh, an airplane wing in red and then this yellow region here is the boundary layer where th that region where the fluid is slowed down by the action of viscosity and the drag of the fluid on the wing will be to the right. It'll be in the direction that opposes motion and that's the drag force due to skin friction. And uh, I believe that completes this example.